In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through how to prepare a compelling specifics aim page in support of your NIH SBIR application. Whether you're developing a new cancer therapeutic, a health tech breakthrough, a new biomedical device, or any transformative healthcare solution, mastering the specifics aim page of your SBIR application to the NIH is key. Because this can be the make it or break it document as to whether or not you can secure over hundreds or even millions of dollars of non-dilutive funding from the NIH to transform your vision into a reality. So so grab your notes and let's unlock the secrets of how to craft the specifics aims document so that your proposal can stand out from the rest. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Stacey Chin from KeeperEquity.co and our mission is to help startups secure non-dilutive funding. We specialize in science and tech startups by helping them to secure funding from federal programs such as those from the SVIR and the STTR. If you're interested in learning more about those programs, I'll leave a link to another video in the description below. And we also consult lots of other private and public businesses as well as NGOs on their non-dilutive fundraising strategy by helping them to navigate the complex federal grants and contracting landscape. The Specifics Aims page is a vital component for any NIH SBRS teacher application. It is a one-page document that serves multiple purposes, including outlining the project's objectives, goals, research plan, and anticipated benefits, which is critical for the NIH to evaluate the project's technical merit and significance of the proposed work. And the Specifics Aim page is also meant to provide a snapshot of your SBR project innovation and its potential impact to address key gaps in the scientific knowledge and understanding within a particular sector of healthcare. So ultimately, the clarity, precision, and alignment of your SBIR application so that you can best align your proposal so that you can increase your chances to secure non-dilutive funding. So in this video, I'm going to walk you step by step how to craft a strong and compelling specific aims draft. And by the end of this video, I hope that you have a clear roadmap to craft a compelling specific aim draft that would meet NIH standards. So stay tuned for a comprehensive breakdown of each of the crucial elements. But before we get into it, I have one small favor to ask you. We've recently learned that 90% of our viewers have not yet subscribed to our channel. And our goal is to get that down to 70%. So if you found any of these videos or tips helpful, we would greatly appreciate if you can like this video and subscribe to this channel. And in exchange, we're promised to continue working hard to provide you founders with the necessary knowledge, resources, insights, and tips to support you in your non-dilutive fundraising journey. And now let's jump into it. So the first thing you want to include in a specific aim draft is to identify the problem that you want to solve. You want to consider a couple key factors. First, clearly define the specific problem or challenge you're trying to solve. And you want to make sure this problem statement is relevant, significant, and is aligned to NIH's funding priority. Provide compelling evidence, such as relevant statistics or data. And you want to illustrate the problem's magnitude and impact in that manner as well. Additionally, emphasize how solving the problem will fill a gap in the current knowledge or technology and how that will contribute to advancing the scientific understanding within a critical healthcare need. And finally, make sure this problem statement is concise and focused. Next up, founders should explain why there's a technical need, provide a compelling rationale as to why this proposed project is critical, emphasize any existing gaps or limitations in today's methodologies, devices, solutions, or approaches that's related to the problem, and then highlight why your innovation is superior compared to its current existing technologies. So this shows the NIH study review panel, founders have a clear idea of the current technical landscape, which shows their expertise and uniqueness within their approach. Next, you want to introduce your innovation, or rather your solution to solve that particular problem. Focus on conveying why your innovation or solution is unique and novel. Do you want to show how your innovation is a significant departure from existing technologies or methods? And you can do that by emphasizing its value proposition, competitive advantage, or proprietary aspects of your technology. And don't forget to add a sentence to explain how your innovation addresses the problem that you already identify at the beginning of your specifics aim draft. I also recommend including any evidence or preliminary data, if available, to help to show the feasibility and the effectiveness of your approach. Now the next section is to describe your proposal effort. Or in other words, if you were to get the SBR funding, what are you going to do? Here, outline the specific tasks, experience activities that you plan to undertake to overcome your technical R&D hurdle. And we call each of these tasks the specifics aims. Demonstrate 
a well-organized and thoughtful approach, detailing the timelines, resources available, and anticipated deliverable. Here, founders can also emphasize the rigor and methodologies that will be implemented when executing this proposed project so that the reviewers have the confidence in the project's feasibility. Also, it's nice to add a sentence if you plan to pursue these efforts in collaboration with an academic university, an industry leader, or a partnership with other third parties. And last but not least, the last thing you want to include in the Pacific's Ames draft is a summary of the deliverables or future directions of your project. Here, you can provide a roadmap as to what you expect to achieve if you're successful in these SBR efforts and how those efforts will support your commercial and clinical goals. Identify what is your key deliverable, whether it's developing a beta prototype, developing a proof of concept, or research findings to support some sort of regulatory filing from these proposal efforts. Additionally, what are the potential impacts in the healthcare space and how these efforts would eventually advance the understanding of the scientific knowledge or advance healthcare. And with that, you should now have a compelling and well-crafted specifics aim page that you include with your NIH SBR application. Thank you so much for watching to the end of this video. I hope you found these tips helpful to help you draft a compelling SBIR specifics aims draft. And if you haven't done so, I would greatly appreciate if you can like this video and subscribe to this channel. And don't forget to check out our website at keepyourequity.co where you find lots of other resources, templates, and advice on how you can secure non-dilutive funding throughout your fundraising journey. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you in the video very soon.